Good afternoon. Today is Friday, February 27th, 2024. I am Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Maryland Department of Health's Developmental Disability Administration. We welcome you to the DDA Waiver Application Process Training. On the panel today, we have Rhonda Workman, Director of Federal Programs, and Linda Yale, Deputy Director at the Western Regional Office. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options to hear the webinar by computer and phone. If you look at the panel interface on your right labeled audio, you could click either computer or phone to switch for the best option. We have one handout for this webinar, which can be downloaded from the handout section, or if you're listening by phone, you can request that they be emailed. We will be recording the webinar and posting this session on YouTube and the DDA website. Today's PowerPoint has been uploaded as an attachment and is available for you to download in the webinar panel box. Questions can be typed in the question or chat box in the webinar panel, and we'll get to those towards the end of the presentation. So now I'd like to introduce Rhonda Workman, Director of Federal Programs. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Donna. On behalf of the entire DDA team, we want to welcome you to today's training on the new concurrent waiver application processes. Donna, can you go to the next slide, please? Joining us today are various DDA partners, such as providers and others who are interested in learning about the waiver application process. Our presentation is specifically geared towards coordinators of community services. During our question and answer sessions, we will be addressing CCS questions only. For our other partners today, if you have any questions, please follow up with your regional office. Please do not note questions in the chat box so that we can support our CCSs in their training today. First, it is important to note that we are not changing the DDA waiver application packet components. Today, we will be sharing how the components need to be done concurrently. We collectively support approximately 19,000 individuals and their families in need of home and community-based services to ensure their health and welfare and support their goals. To further support our collective priority for individuals to be enrolled and access home and community-based services as soon as possible, the DDA operated Medicaid waiver application processes or aligning with other Maryland Department of Health home and community-based service program application processes. And the new DDA concurrent eligibility processes we are discussing today will support more timely waiver eligibility determinations. The new processes we are sharing today can begin today. We know your agencies may be updating internal processes and procedures and suggest that you connect with your supervisors and managers. However, please note the new process will be utilized for our upcoming transitioning youth and all other individuals placed on a wave as of March 1st and thereafter. The regional offices have already begun to add people to the TY wave and will have their work completed by or before March 1st. Before reviewing the agenda, I want to ask you for your focused attention to our training today. Please close emails and minimize distractions. Please jot questions down during the presentation. Some of them may be answered in a later slide. If you have questions we have not addressed during our presentation, then please note them in the chat box. For today's training, our agenda includes a brief review of the waiver eligibility requirements, clarifications on the differences between the Medicaid waiver application versus the DDA waiver application packet, as these terms differ. We're gonna start with a high level overview, think like a 50,000 level view of the current waiver application processes 
and the new concurrent waiver application processes. We will also share 10 key concurrent eligibility processes. We will review the DDA waiver application packet and share important reminders for the various packet components. We will also review some scenarios, such as people in crisis or emergency situations, transitioning youth, and individuals leaving institutions. We will share some guidance related to the state review team and ABLE accounts. Our last slide includes some tools and resources, and we will end with questions and answers. Next slide, please. Let's first review waiver eligibility requirements. To be eligible for a Medicaid waiver program, the person must meet waiver specific technical, medical and financial eligibility criteria. Applicants must demonstrate through a screening process that they need the level of support that people receive in an institution. They must meet the waiver financial eligibility requirements and they must have a person-centered plan that supports their health and welfare. As a reminder, the DDA determines technical and medical eligibility, and the Eligibility Determination Division, or EDD, determines financial eligibility. All of these steps can be completed at the same time. Next slide, please. Before we begin discussing, the new concurrent eligibility process, it is important to distinguish between the Medicaid waiver application shown on the left side of this slide and the LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet. The Medicaid waiver application is the state application used for all applicants applying to a Maryland home and community-based service waiver program. Based on the person's current situation, a long or short long-term care waiver application form is completed. The DDA waiver application packet is the LTSS Maryland form that includes an overview section with the waiver application status, an enrollment checklist section that gets filled in when the level of care the person-centered plan, the Medicaid waiver application, the freedom of choice, and the EDD release forms are completed or uploaded. It also includes a documentation section that includes the Medicaid waiver application, freedom of choice form, EDD release form, meeting minutes or sign-in sheets, and other supporting documents like bank statements, trust, and ABLE account information. And the LTSS Maryland waiver application packet also includes a workforce or workflow history section. The concurrent eligibility processes we are discussing today includes processes associated with both of these terms. Next slide, please. This is a high level view of the current waiver application processes. This visual shows the DDA regional office staff processes beginning with placement of the person on the LTSS wave on day one. The CCS can also begin their work on day one when they receive the alert of the person being placed on the wave by reaching out to the person to set up a meeting and start creating the PCP and the DDA waiver application packet. EDD does not begin their work until later in the process. EDD cannot begin their work until the Medicaid waiver application is submitted. Our current process, including last year's TYs, have the Medicaid waiver application being created and uploaded into LTSS after the PCP process. This results in EDD receiving the Medicaid waiver application at day 30 or later in the process. For individuals who do not have a federal disability determination, the state review team process is also needed. This process also does not begin until after the Medicaid waiver application is submitted. Next slide, please. 
This slide is a high level view of the new concurrent waiver application processes. Similar to the current process, the DDA regional office staff processes begin with the placement of the person on the LTSS wave on day one. The CCS can also begin their work on day one after receiving the alert when reaching out to the person to set up that meeting under our new processes. The CCS can begin to share the waiver application process, including sharing information about the financial supporting documentations that need to be collected by the person. The CCS will prioritize creating and submitting the Medicaid waiver application first. The CCS will also concurrently complete the various LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet processes, such as the person center plan, level of care, freedom of choice, and EDD release form. We will further review these and other actions in today's training. With the Medicaid waiver application, that long or short form, being prioritized and submitted as soon as possible, EDD can now begin their work on day three. By submitting the Medicaid waiver application, again, the short or large, long form first, EDD can begin to review financial documents and systems to determine the level of assets, incomes, and medical expenses applicants have. For individuals who must go through the state review team process, this can also begin as soon as possible. Next slide, please. This slide is a high-level visual of the old process and the new concurrent processes. It demonstrates EDD being able to start their work as soon as possible and support more timely eligibility determinations and access to services. Next slide, please. This slide is a general overview of 10 key eligibility processes. The first step in the DDA eligibility application and determination processes. The last step in the process is the LTSS Maryland overall decision form. The DDA regional office, CCS, and EDD have specific critical processes to complete. For some steps in the process, one entity, meaning DDA, CCS, and EDD, cannot begin their work until another entity completes a key process. Let's review each process and some important reminders. So on the slide, starting from the left side, is the DDA eligibility process. Individuals have applied for the DDA services and have been deemed DD eligible according to Maryland statute. When this is done, the individual is then added to the DDA waiting list. Next process is the wave placement. Individuals are placed on an LTSS Maryland wave and provided an opportunity to apply to a DDA waiver application program based on the assessed need. CCSs will get an alert that the individual has been added to a wave. The Medicaid waiver application, that short or long form, and the person center plan program type must match the WAVE program type. It's important to note if the individual needs a different waiver program type than is noted in the alert that CCSs are to reach out to the regional office. Linda will share more about this in the upcoming slides. The next key process is the Medicaid waiver application. That's the short and long form. The Medicaid waiver application titled Long-Term Care Waiver Medical Assistance Application, long or short form, is used to apply to a specific DDA Medicaid waiver program. This is the first step to complete in our new concurrent eligibility processes. This should be done and submitted within the first three days of the date the individual is added to a waive. The next key process is our person-centered plan. The PCP outlines an individual's goals and vision for their good life. A CCS must submit an initial PCP and LTSS Maryland for the same DDA Medicaid waiver program that is identified on the MA waiver application. 
The initial PCP should be submitted to the regional office within 10 days of the person being added to the WAVE. The next key process is the authorization of the person-centered plan. Regional office program staff reviews and authorize the PCP. This happens before the DDA waiver application packet can be submitted by the CCS for regional office eligibility staff review. The DDA waiver application packet process includes the MA waiver application, PCP, level care form, freedom of choice form, EDD release form. All the required documents must be submitted in order to make an eligible decision for the applied waiver program. The DDA waiver application packet in LTSS must be submitted within two days of the authorization of the PCP. The next key process is the approval of waiver application packet. The regional office eligibility staff reviews the DDA waiver application packet. If all documents have been submitted and passes the waiver checklist, then it can be approved. The next key process is the financial eligibility determination. Upon receipt of the Medicaid waiver application within three days of the person being added to the waive, EDD will review assets, incomes, and medical expenses and apply special financial eligibility to determine if an individual is financially eligible. If an individual does not have any federal benefits, they must also be determined disabled by the state review team, or SRT, in order to be enrolled in the waiver. Our next key process is the authorization to participate. The authorization to participate, or ATP, confirms whether or not an individual meets the medical, technical, and financial criteria for enrollment into a DDA Medicaid waiver program. If the individual does not meet the eligibility requirements, they will be denied and returned to the waiting list. And the last step in our process is the overall decision form. The LTSS Maryland overall decision form can only be completed once the individual has been deemed financially eligible for the waiver. If the individual does not meet the medical, technical, and financial eligibility requirements, they will not be approved for the waiver. Next slide, please. This is a visual of the LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet form on the left. It includes the checklist that is associated with the various eligibility processes and requirements. This checklist is represented with the visual on the left of the slide. And as shared today, the various processes and documents can be completed concurrently, simultaneously, at the same time. The visual on the right side of the slide represents the same components, but orders them differently to emphasize the importance of completing and submitting the Medicaid waiver application first so that EDD can begin their work. We will review each component on the next slides and share important reminders. Please remember that individuals and families may be in crisis, transitioning from the educational school system, or have been waiting for services for some time. As CCSs working with individuals and families, you are aware of their current goals and needs through your regular monitoring and follow-up activities and recent updates. Similar to expectations we would have if we had a family member in need of DDA services and supports, it is important for all of us collectively to work diligently to complete steps so that waiver eligibility determinations can be made and individuals can access services. Linda is now going to walk through each component of the DDA waiver application packet and some important reminders. Next slide, please. As we have already stated, Medicaid waiver application must be prioritized so that EDD can begin their work as soon as possible. 
the CCS must prioritize creating and submitting the Medicaid waiver application within LTSS Maryland. When first contacting the individual, the CCS can begin to share the waiver application process, including the supporting financial documentation that will be needed when they submit the application. The application can be pre-populated with all the known information prior to the initial meeting. After the initial meeting, the application can be reviewed and updates can be made. The application then needs to be signed and submitted in LTSS Maryland as soon as possible. Remember, you know these individuals and have been doing the monitoring and follow-up with them. They've shared their needs with you and now is your time to shine. Next slide, please. As a CCS, you may be wondering, how do you know what waiver to apply for? The specific DDA waiver program that the individual can apply to is based on the program type noted within the WAVE. This slide includes a screenshot from the client summary of LTSS Maryland. This is the DDA waiting list, future need registry, and WAVE information section of the client summary. In this example, CS, meaning the Community Supports Waiver, is noted as the applicable program for which this individual has been given the opportunity to apply. As per our current guidance, children will be placed on a WAVE for Family Supports Waiver. Adults that are 18 and older will be placed on a WAVE for Community Supports Waiver. Adults 18 and older with an assessed need for residential services will be placed on the Community Pathways Waiver. If the individual needs a different waiver program, please reach out to the regional office and share the assessed need so that the service can be added to the waive. Next slide, please. This slide relates to the MA long form. The MA waiver application must match the WAVE program type that's noted in LTSS Maryland, as seen on our previous slide. And it should have the following in the upper right-hand corner of this application. The DDA waiver program, the CCS's initials, and the date that the document was signed. This slide shows you an example of this requirement. Next slide, please. This slide relates to the short application. The MA waiver application must match the WAVE program that's noted in LTSS Maryland as seen on that previous slide. For the short form, the CCS will note the following information as shown on this slide. You will note your waiver program, the CCS initials, and the date that this document was signed. This slide is an example of this requirement. Next slide, please. The MA waiver application must be uploaded into LTSS Maryland in the documentation section of the DDA waiver application packet. Uploading this document allows EDD to start their financial eligibility to termination process. The supporting financial documentation should also be uploaded into the documentation section. This slide includes a screenshot of our DDA waiver application packet, enrollment checklist, and the documentation section where the MA waiver application was uploaded. Next slide, please. If the individual does not have all of their supporting financial documents, the CCS must submit the MA waiver application with the documents that are available. It is important to not wait until all of the documentation is gathered so the EDD can begin their process as soon as possible. Documents provided after the DDA waiver application packet has been submitted to the regional office 
shall be uploaded into the client attachment section under financial document dropdown. This slide includes a screenshot of the client attachments under the new documents where you can see new document form and the documents we're talking about are part of the MA waiver application. So the CCS will select the financial documents in the dropdown and upload the, applica the applicable documents. Next slide, please. The MA waiver application has a six month consideration period, which begins on the first day of the month that the application was received. For example, an application that is signed on February 21st, 2024, the consideration period for this application would be from February 1st through July 31st. July 31st would be the end of that six month consideration period for a February 21st application. If any supporting documentation is missing, EDD will send a request for information letter with the date the information must be returned to EDD. Applicants who do not comply within the designated timeframes will get a denial letter. If the documentation is submitted before the end of the six month consideration period, the individual can still be enrolled. If the documentation is not submitted before the end of the six month period, you have to start all over again with a new waiver application packet. Next slide, please. Again, applicants who do not comply with the designated timeframes will get a denial letter. If all of the missing documentation is submitted before the end of that six month consideration period, the individual can still be enrolled. If you do not submit the missing information before the end of that six month period, a new waiver application will be have will have to be completed and the application process will start all over again. Next slide, please. The person-centered plan is also a component of the required DDA waiver application packet. A PCP is an outline of the individual's goals and visions for their good life. A good PCP is comprehensive and ensures that the individual's assessed needs are met through various supports so that they can achieve their goals and objectives towards their defined good life. The PCP is based on the information gathered during your interview process, during your assessments, and your meetings with your individuals and their team. Next slide, please. All new waiver applications must have an initial PCP. The PCP program must match the WAVE and the MA application waiver program. As the CCS is working with people and conducting regularly monitoring and follow-up activities, you're very familiar with these individuals and their goals and their immediate needs. The immediate service needs can be noted in the initial PCP for waiver enrollment. The plan can be revised as needed afterwards. As our collective goal is to support the individual in getting enrolled in the waiver and starting services, it is important to submit the initial PCP as soon as possible. Once again, this PCP can be pre-populated based on your previous discussions. You know these individuals, you've submitted their request for a crisis, or you've submitted the monitoring and follow-up forms, so you know what these individuals need. The initial PCP can be submitted without a provider listed. The initial PCP is also an opportunity for the individual to pick their annual implementation date. 
this date is the date that they will continue to then have their P annual PCP meetings. And it's like a birthday. It does not have to be the one that's pre-populated in LTSS. It's a date that they pick and you can add into the PCP. Next slide, please. For people interested in self-directed services, the DDA will be offering a self-directed services introduction session on March 25th. Seventh, to help people further understand their roles and responsibilities. To prevent a delay in services, the individuals can begin to receive services under the traditional service model while learning more about their self-directed service model. People currently in the self-directed service model can also sign up for the SDS introduction session. Alma is going to share some more information about the level of care, freedom of choice, and supporting documents. Next slide, please. Thank you, Linda. So I'm sorry, now, Rhonda, Alma's not here today. <laughs> all good, Linda. Thank you so much. The next component of the DDA waiver application packet we want to review is the level of care form. Prior to entering the waiver program, Individuals must be certified as being in need of waiver services and must meet Maryland's Developmentally Disabled or DD eligibility criteria, which includes a need for active treatment. The level of care form serves as documentation that an individual is medically eligible to participate in a DDA waiver program. Next slide, please. The initial level of care form can be completed prior to or after the initial meeting and immediately uploaded into the DDA waiver application packet in LTSS Maryland. Please be sure to use the current initial level of care form, which is posted on the DDA website, and we've included a link here on this slide. It is important to complete all required fields in the form and for the CCS to sign the form before uploading into LTSS Maryland. Next slide, please. The Freedom of Choice form documents that the person has elected to receive services and supports through a DDA waiver program instead of an institution or some other entity. It also indicates that the individual understands that they can choose among service models and receive DDA waiver services from any of the approved DDA providers. It is important for CCSs to review this information with the individual so that they are adequately informed. The DDA Guide to Services and Easy Read Guide is a helpful tool to share with people and families. The form includes a box noting which service model the individual is interested. Selecting a model on this form does not commit the individual to the selected model. As a reminder, people can explore the self-directed service model in the new DDA self-directed services introduction session. Individuals can begin traditional services while exploring self-directed services to prevent any delay in getting their immediate needs met. Next slide, please. This slide is a reminder to use the current Freedom of Choice form and complete all required fields, including the individual's name and required signatures. We've also included a link to the current Freedom of Choice form so that we can ensure we're all using the current version. Next slide, please. The next component of the DDA waiver application packet we want to review is the EDD release form. EDD can release information regarding the individual's financial eligibility to a coordinator of community services. The individual must sign the form and indicate who they would like EDD to share their eligibility information with. In many cases, the CCSs will receive a copy of all financial information related to eligibility so that the CCS can also receive the letters and notices on the individual's eligibility status. 
it is important to update this form and submit to EDD when the CCS changes, especially when the individual chooses a different CCS agency so that you can continue to receive the alerts. The form was updated to reflect all DDA operated waiver programs and posted at the website at the link noted on the slide. Please ensure that you're using this new updated EDD release form as you complete the DDA waiver application packet. Next slide, please. Lastly, we would like to review the importance of submitting documents associated with the DDA waiver application packet. A list of required financial documents are included on the first page of the MA waiver application that includes on the long and short forms. As shared previously, during the initial call to the individual and family, the CCS should share examples of documents that they should begin to collect in order and in, in view of the upcoming initial meeting. In order for EDD to make a determination, it is important that all requested documents are submitted in their entirety. For example, if a bank statement is requested and it is 10 pages long, the applicant is required to submit all 10 pages of the document. This includes when the last page is blank, it still needs to be submitted and all information in the document must be viewable and readable. Therefore, no sections or information should be marked, redacted or blackened out. Next slide, please. If any supporting documentation is missing, as Linda has shared, EDD will send a request for information letter with a date the information must be returned to EDD. Requested documents should be submitted to EDD as soon as possible and uploaded into LTSS Maryland client attachments under the financial documents dropdown option. Reminder that individuals who fail to submit the required documents will be denied enrollment. They have up until that six month consideration period to provide those documents before an entire new application must be submitted and the process begin again. Next slide, please. This is a screenshot of the various supporting documents associated with applying for a Medicaid waiver program. This is the long form. We've also included the links to the long and short forms so you can click on and review. Linda is now going to walk us through some scenarios. Next slide, please. Okay, we're now going to talk about some different scenarios that you may run into. The new concurrent eligibility process will be used for all DDA applications to support timely waiver eligibility determinations. This includes, but is not limited to our TYs, individuals in emergency and crisis situations, individuals in an institution. Our current eligibility process can be used starting today. The new process must be utilized for all of our upcoming TYs and all people that are placed on the wave as of March 1st and thereafter. TYs will be added to the TY wave on or before March 1st. Next slide, please. So let's talk about our TYs as they're our largest group that we support with the waiver application process each year. As per our discussion today, the MA waiver application is good for six month period from the date that it is signed. This means that we can have the TYs sign their application prior to the May 15th date. As TY funding becomes available on July 1st of each year, the PCP effective date should be no earlier than July 1st. If people plan to start services after July 1st of their TY year, then the date should be noted. For example, some people take the summer off and start services in September. If you have some questions related to how long the waiver 
application is good for and what date that it should be signed, please reach out to your regional office and they can assist you with that. Next slide, please. This slide relates to individuals in crisis and emergency situations. Their health and safety are in jeopardy. We don't have any time to delay to get these services in place. Ask yourself, what support and timeline would you want if you or your family member was in a crisis situation? The individuals in these situations should be fast-tracked and processed as soon as possible. You know these individuals and you know what situation they are in. You're the one that's reported it to DDA. So you need to take immediately, contact the individual whenever you get the wave alert, assist them with completing the wave, waiver application packet as soon as possible, pre-populate everything you can, and the packet should be submitted within three days. Please reach out to the regional office for any assistance needed with the process of identifying providers or any barriers that you may be experiencing. Next slide, please. Individuals transitioning from an institution, a nursing home facility, Holly Center, Potomac Center, and behavioral health uh, hospitals must have a MA waiver application. If there is no transition date or housing has not been determined, then an advisory opinion will be requested. Once the date for transition has been identified and an address for that person, then an authorization packet will be submitted. Next slide, please. It's very important that you contact your regional office and alert them of their transition dates. Once the housing is confirmed so that an authorization request can be submitted to EDD. The advisory opinion is good for a specific period of time, which is noted in the letter. Generally, it's six months. If housing is not identified by the date of that letter, then a new waiver application must be submitted and the process begins again. On the day of the transition, it is important to confirm that the individual was discharged because the regional office must submit a, an authorization to participate so that we have the correct date on the waiver application. If the individual does not discharge on the transition date, immediately contact the regional office and share the new discharge date with them. Next slide, please. This slide relates to people that are being referred from other Medicaid waiver programs. So individuals who are currently enrolled in a DDA Medicaid waiver program with new service needs that can be met, can't be met in their current waiver or will be exceeding their program limit, for example, if they are family supports waiver and they are over the age of 21, they may be referred to another program. To be referred, the CCS must complete the initial PCP for the new DDA Medicaid waiver program. Once approved by the DDA, the CCS then can complete the MA waiver application and continue with the new concurrent eligibility process. We've included a link to the related policy as a reference. Rhonda is now going to share some more information about our state review team and the incomes and assets. Next slide, please. Thank you, Linda. So this slide relates to the state review team process. People without a federal disability determination will be referred to the state review team for a determination. If you work with an individual that's over the age of 18 and does not have Social Security, they will most likely be referred to the state review team. CCSs can share the state review team forms with the individual and teams so that they can be completed and submitted to EDD as soon as possible. 
The state review team forms can be accessed at the link on this slide. Next slide, please. This slide relates to income and assets. As part of the financial eligibility process, EDD will review the individual's income and assets to see if they are within the federally approved waiver program standards. Income and assets are based on the applicant's information only. Some people, even current waiver participants, may have monthly income and assets that can put them at risk of not meeting or continuing to meet the financial eligibility requirements. To support the initial eligibility and continued enrollment, CCSs should continue to share information regarding the options to establish Maryland ABLE accounts and special needs trusts, which provide some protections under the Medicaid rules. We've included a link to Maryland ABLE website on this slide as a reference. Next slide, please. This slide is a high level visual of the old process and the new concurrent processes. It demonstrates that the steps in the processes that has been changed. Just a reminder that the requirements have not changed. A few items in the process have moved around to allow EDD to start their work as soon as possible to support timely eligibility determinations and access to services. The CCSs should prioritize creating and submitting the Medicaid waiver application, the short or long form, first. The CCS should concurrently complete the various LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet processes, such as the PCP, level of care, freedom of choice, and ADD release form. So on this slide, the white tiles demonstrate the processes that were reordered. And you can see them from the old system or the old process to the new. Next slide, please. This slide highlights the documents that are in the DDA waiver application packet. As shared in previous slides, the various processes and documents can be completed concurrently, simultaneously at the same time. Here are a few highlights to remember. All documents can be pre-populated before the initial meeting. Remember, you know these people and you have been working with them for some time now. The Medicaid waiver application, that short or long form, should be submitted within three days from the date of waive placement, when you get that alert. The PCP should be submitted within 10 days from the date of waive placement. And use updated level care, freedom of choice, and EDD release forms in LTSS. Be sure to sign where you are supposed to sign. Please feel free to print out this slide and other slides as desk reference tools to help you with the concurrent eligibility process. Next slide, please. So before wrapping up, we wanted to touch base on redeterminations and offer some reminders. CCSs should be on the lookout for redetermination letters. The letters will note where to submit the application and supporting documents. Some people need to submit to EDD, and others need to submit it directly to the local Department of Social Services. Upload documents into the client attachment section. For redetermination applications, upload under the drop down of MA application in the client attachments. For supporting documents, when you're uploading into client attachments, upload under financial documents as the drop down option. Similar to MA waiver applications, in order for EDD or the local DSS to make a determination, it is important that all requested documents are submitted in their entirety. Please note that if people are supposed to be responding to the local DSS, uploading information into LTSS will not be received by the local Department of Social Services. For people whose redeterminations require them to submit documents, to the local DSS, 
that information needs to be directly sent and to the local DSS. In addition, upload them into client attachments. Next slide, please. Individuals are sent four letters before they're disenrolled. If an individual does not meet the timeline or requirements, please advise them of their right to appeal the disenrollment. If appealed timely, within 10 days of notice, their services can continue until the appeal decision has been given. Note the individual has up to 120 days to submit the documents to be reinstated without having to fully reapply and go through the waiver application process again. Next slide, please. This slide includes links to helpful tools and resources that you can use. It includes the MA waiver application, both the long and short form, in addition to the redetermination form. We've also included previous guidance related to the various waiver programs for financial eligibility, our guide to services, and the new EDD release form that has been updated. Next slide, please. This slide includes our regional office contacts related to eligibility and waiver. Please feel free to reach out to them for any questions and technical assistance. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna go through some of the questions and answers that we received in the chat. And so beginning at the, the first question we received, will EDD get an alert once the application is uploaded? So yes, absolutely, EDD will get an alert when the MA waiver application, both the short and long forms, are uploaded into LTSS Maryland. Please note as we've talked today, they will also receive an alert when financial documents are uploaded into the LTSS Maryland client attachment section under that drop-down option for financial documents. It is important to upload the documents upon receipt so EDD can review them. Remember, as Linda said, do not hold the waiver application waiting for supporting documents. Upload information as you receive them so that EDD can get the alerts and start to work through. The next question was related to slide 35 and the state review team information. The person notes that the information does not um, seem to be peering as it links to the CCS page. Please note that the link to the state review team information is on the CCS main page. If you scroll down, you will see the state review team at a glance um, title and document, and the forms are also noted right below it. Question um, related to how often or how often after a Medicaid waiver application is submitted should the CCS be following up with EDD caseworker for a status? Great question. EDD has 45 days to make their determination. So from that perspective, um, I would wait that time frame. We'll also be able to see information and processing flowing as the regional offices will be tracking and monitoring. Next question is, so does this mean that with financial approval now coming before ATP individuals, will no longer be able to receive services from a provider on the initial PCP while waiting for the financial de decisions? That is correct. No individual should be starting services um, without waiver enrollment. That includes as of today and previously. So no people should start services without full waiver enrollment. Next question, how will EDD be notified when the NMA application is uploaded to LTSS prior to the full packet being submitted? So again, once you upload the MA application into LTSS, even though the full LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet has been submitted, ED will get an alert. So please, once you receive the MA waiver application, the short or long form, upload that into the packet section under that checklist and they'll get the alert immediately. Question, how do you know to use the short or long form? What is the difference? 
Linda, do you want to share some information on that? So it is my understanding that when you get your wave alert, that the individual has been identified to begin applying for services. There is also a notification of whether the short or long form can be used. When in doubt, my inclination is always to use the long form. But if you have additional questions, you can reach out to your regional office. Yeah, we got a few questions related to that. I'm again asking about the short and long form, um, when to use it. Um, and again, as we shared today, once you get that wave alert, you can pre-populate those forms. Um, let the person know when you make that initial call that they're going to need financial documents so that they can gather that so that you can continue to move that forward um, productively. Question, is the PCP, that initial PCP, due within 10 business days or calendar days, Linda? That's business days. Great, All of you. the days that are mentioned in this slide are related to business days. Question about where we can get more information about the pill process be found. The letters that are sent to individuals includes a notice related to the appeal process um, and their rights. So you can refer to the letters that you have access to in LTSS Maryland. Question, what if there is already an added to the wave alert and it was sent more than three days ago? Can we still submit the MA application as soon as possible? Absolutely. Please, if you received an alert in the last week, please immediately take action to get that completed. We do recognize that there may be some extenuating circumstances or challenges reaching families. Um, again, as I said, the, C the regional offices will be monitoring the packets and the process going forward. You can reach out to your regional office for assistance and to alert them to challenges you're having um, with uh, um, reaching people. Someone wants to know who do we contact if the Medicaid waiver application is beyond three days. Um, again, um, you can reach out to your regional office to let them know the current status. Um, question, if a person is waiting on SSDI to be approved, does this still have to be approved before they can be enrolled in the waiver? It's a great question. So if someone's pending an SSDI decision or an SSI decision, and they're also applying to the waiver, um, we're kind of in an interesting situation because in order for the person to be enrolled, if the federal determination the disabled has not been made, then this person would be referred to the state review team. So what we want you to do again, get the documents completed, get them uploaded into LTSS, get them submitted as soon as possible. And then based on that, we'll, we'll be able to, as a department, make a decision on next steps and what needs to be um, completed. Question about a person, um, a TY maybe, who it may not have been added to a wave. Um, by March 1st, who do we contact? Reach out to your regional office if by March 1st you have a transitioning youth that was not added to a wave. Question, when is an EDD case manager assigned? How do I know the application was received? Once you upload it into LTSS um, Maryland under the MA waiver application in the waiver application packet, EDD will get the alert. Again, we will be monitoring this as it's a, a change in our sequence of things um, and um, meeting with our EDD partners related to that. Question, will individuals be automatically enrolled into the waiver or does the CCS need to follow up? Individuals are not automatically enrolled into the waiver um, in the sense that just by submitting the application, Determinations have to be made related to whether they meet the technical, medical, and financial eligibility that we reviewed on um, some of the initial slides. Once that determination is made, then they will be enrolled um, into the waiver. Question, do we have to wait until the individual is added to the waive before starting the waiver process? Linda, do you wanna share your thoughts related to that? So whenever the person has been identified as somebody that can begin to access the funding, they are added to a wave. So if you are going to be 
doing a waiver process for somebody who is not on a wave, make sure you're talking with your regional office to um, make sure that person has been identified for funding. So again, the alert in LTSS you get when we add someone to the wave um, who is new to services, that's your um, indication that start that waiver application process. I would note that if you're supporting somebody who's DD eligible and receiving state funding, you should then also be working on the waiver packet to get them re-enrolled into the waiver. Question, uh, will LTSS be updated to allow CCS to create an initial PCP without an individual being added to a wave yet? Um, again, the person has to be added to the wave in order for you um, to create that initial PCP if they're new to services. The state review team forms, we added the link to that. It's on the CCS page that includes the other waiver um, documents. We do not have any TY traditional providers in Cecil County. Do all TYs need to start with traditional before starting with self-direction? Again, you need to use the person-centered planning process um, related to um, exploring options and opportunities to meet people's needs. If you have challenges identifying providers, please reach out to your regional office that can provide some assistance. Question, do state only funded individuals need to be reevaluated for the waiver? What is that process? Absolutely, we want all individuals that are DD eligible, um, that are um, receiving state funding to be evaluated for the waiver so that we can ensure that their needs are being met, they can access uh, medical assistance, include pharmacy, physician specialists, and also we can maximize our state dollars. Remember, collectively, we get a 50% match on services that are provided under the waiver. Question, if an individual has been disenrolled from the waiver, will we repeat the same procedures? Um, again, I would um, state to review the slides. Remember, if they're in the 120-day consideration period, if someone was disenrolled recently because of a redetermination, if they provide the supporting documents, they could be reinstated without having to complete the whole waiver application process. If they're outside that consideration period, then yes, you would repeat the same procedures. For people who currently are in a DD waiver, but we feel they should be referred to a different waiver, do we need to verify this with the regional office? Yes, reach out to the regional office. They can provide support for you. Again, as we shared on the slide, the family supports waiver will be geared for um, youth and children. Um, our community supports will be for people considered 18 and older and community pathways would be for 18 and older and in need of residential services. Okay, so just seeing if there's any more related to the topic. I know we've gone over our time. Question related, can individuals who are not DD eligible get reevaluated? Absolutely, the person can reach out to the regional office um, if they'd like to request a reconsideration um, and be evaluated. So in closing today, we really appreciate your time and attention um, and your questions related to um, the DDA waiver application process. As a reminder, it is so important and critical that you're paying attention and immediately taking action when you get an alert that someone is added to a wave. This provides them the opportunity to apply to a DDA waiver or DDA waiver program, and the specific program they can apply to, as Linda shared and noted in the slide, is noted on their um, wave status in LTSS Maryland. Upon getting that alert, please immediately reach out to the individual and the families. Let them know um, what financial documents to get together. Pre-populate the MA waiver application, whether it's the short or the long form, so that when you're meeting with them, you can review it, collect documents they have, 
and then immediately submit that into LTSS Maryland. So EDD gets the alert and can just start working on that. You can again pre-populate the person center plan. That initial plan should be completed and submitted within 10 days of um, the wave placement. And then within a few days of the PCP being approved, we need you to submit the entire LTSS Maryland DDA waiver application packet so that then we can move forward with our authorization and the full enrollment into um, services. So we appreciate your time and your attention and all the support that you do for individuals and families and wish you um, a great day and look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.